The first alternative to a complete spatial randomness that we consider are the clustered patterns. And, and typically, that is what we are most interested in, is some clustering. And so what does this really mean? It means that the events are somehow more together, more grouped, than they would be under spatial randomness. So that means, if you think about it, if they're more grouped, that in some part of the space there will be higher densities and then in other parts there will be lower densities. And, and because of this grouping, uh, and this is thinking ahead to the statistics that we will develop later, many point pairs uh, will be at shorter distances. So as a result of this variability, I mean, you have to think about, visualize a clustered pattern. So a lot of points are very close, but then by the same token, these points are also very far from the points in the other cluster that they're not part of. So as a result of that, um, the variance uh, of the process tends to be larger than the mean. And remember, in a Poisson process, the variance has to equal the mean. So when the variance is larger than the mean, this is called over-dispersion. So what it really implies is that there is a greater variability in densities than under complete spatial randomness. And, and, and you can think about it, you know, visualizing these clusters, that the points within the cluster are very close together. So there's a very high density, if you wish, of, of short distances, but then between the clusters, the distances are larger. So this creates a greater variability in the intensity than you would have under spatial randomness. Now, what could cause this? What, what is the source of this clustering? Because basically, so far, we've been talking about patterns. We haven't been talking about what are the causes or the processes underlying this. And this is a real challenge, in, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. It's a real challenge in the analysis of cross-sectional data, is that when you find clustering, and we mentioned this already in the context of spatial autocorrelation, when you find clustering, it could be due either to contagion, which is a sort of correlation, or it could be due to heterogeneity, which is a variability. So under contagion, what we would have is what one calls a correlated point process. And if you remember the, the properties of complete spatial randomness or of a spatial Poisson process was, first of all, that uh, there's a uniform probability, but also that the probability of an event landing in a particular location is uncorrelated with the probability of an event landing in another location. Now, when you have a correlated point process that doesn't hold anymore, that is violated. So the fact that you do have an event at one location makes changes the probability of having an event at another location, uh, specifically makes it a higher probability that uh, events are at closer locations. So for example, if we would find that somehow liquor stores cluster together, then the fact that we find a liquor store in a particular location would increase the probability of finding one next door if that were indeed the case. You know, whereas under spatial randomness, they wouldn't be affected at all. So this is process of contagion, of spillover, of diffusion that we're really interested in. The other source is heterogeneity. It's basically, there is no correlation whatsoever, but uh, it look, the cluster occurs because there's a different intensity. The intensity of the process varies with location. So in some locations, you have a high intensity, in other locations, a low intensity. In, in uh, the biological examples, in forestry, for example, this could have to do with soil quality. So in a particular soil, you can have a lot of trees. In another soil, you don't have trees. So you find clusters of trees in the good soil, but it has nothing to do with correlation or contagion. It has to do with variability, with what we have called uh, spatial heterogeneity. And a formal expression of this 
type of heterogeneity for point patterns is what is called a heterogeneous Poisson point process. So one way to think about this is as a is two, two stage process and where you have parents and then offspring. So you have a, a process that distributes the parents in space and then you have another process that distributes the offspring around these parents. And for example, it could be um, trees and seedlings, or it could be manu manufacturing plants and spin-offs, or similar processes. So you can think of something that gets you know, at least conceptually located in two stages, first the parents, then the offspring. And there are a number of formal uh, models to uh, express this mathematically. And, and as I mentioned earlier, we won't really get into that in, in this module. That's point pattern analysis could be a whole course in its own right. But the ones you might see in the literature are called Poisson cluster processes or Neyman Scott processes, and then in slightly different mathematical form, which is actually a whole general class of processes which are called matern classes and so the matern cluster process is another example and, and just to illustrate this um, the the process on the left uh, parcels out the parents and it's a, a poisson simulation where you basically draw uh, with a mean of 10 from a poisson distribution and we happen to have 15 and then we can allocate them randomly in space that doesn't matter but what creates the clustering is not so much the location of the parents but the fact that the parents are um, surrounded by offspring and again that's a Poisson process with five as a mean so you see these little clumps of points um, once you forget who the parents are and who the children are they look like clusters of points and that that's a Neyman Scott process that we can simulate. So that's the first way of thinking about it is uh, as a the clustering being the result of a contagious process. The other way of thinking about this is the clustering being the result of a heterogeneous process. And a heterogeneous process is just the same Poisson process we've always seen before, but instead of the mean being lambda times area, the, le the mean lambda gets a subscript s for the location in space. So basically the mean, the intensity changes with location and then the if you want to quantify an overall mean intensity that's just summing or integrating over the whole area, over the whole region. So <clears throat> where does this variability come from? Again, two major ways of thinking about this. One is uh, to relate this to, in some kind of functional form, uh, to covariates, either deterministically or with uh, an error term in its own right, which then leads to hierarchical models, which we won't really cover. But another way to think of it, and again, that leads to hierarchical models, is as a doubly stochastic process. So the, there's, there's double randomness in the process, so to speak. So the, there's randomness with respect to the value of the intensity, and then there's randomness in terms of the value of how many points are generated. And just to illustrate these, um, here's a kind of a fake process where we make the intensity a function of the x-coordinate, so the horizontal coordinate, and as you move to the right, as x increases, the intensity decreases. And you see this very nicely in this process where basically most of the points are in the left half of the of the square box. And so in this case the intensity is a function of deterministic function of the coordinates. Typically, you know, that's that's just an artificial example. Typically it wouldn't be a function of the coordinates, but it would be a function of something of interest, say um, you uh, explain the density of crime or home burglaries as a function of distance to the nearest uh, highway exit or something similar to that. So that would then uh, model uh, 
the varying intensity in the process. And just as an illustration of the doubly stochastic process, um, this is a little hard to explain uh, without getting too formal, but basically there is a random process going in the background, which you see in the pixel image with the darker, uh, the lighter values uh, being higher intensities. And then as a result of that, we draw the points and the points are spread in space and, and form a clustering pack, pa a pattern. So the, the fundamental conceptual issue is that we are not able to differentiate true contagion from apparent contagion. So the idea is in both cases we have clusters, but we can't really tell whether these clusters come from contagion, correlation, or on the other hand, from heterogeneity. This is a special case of, of what is called in statistics the inverse problem, which is really about trying to identify process from pattern. So what we have is a pattern. What we don't know is a process. And with a pure cross-section without further structure, it's impossible to identify contagion from heterogeneity. So part of the modeling of point patterns is to impose mathematical structure to the problem to try to d dissect um, these two possibilities. So that's for the first alternative, the, the one we tend to be most typically interested in, the clustered patterns. The reverse, the other alternative, is called regular patterns or dispersed patterns. And, and, and these are uh, basically the opposite of a cluster. So a regular pattern is less grouped than it would be under spatial randomness. So in other words, more spread out which means there are fewer higher densities. There's a lot of empty space, more empty space than would occur randomly. And many point pairs uh, will tend to be at larger distances. Not, not very points will be close together. And the consequence of that for the statistical distribution is that um, we have the, the opposite of over dispersion. Actually, this slide is incorrect. It should be under dispersion, uh, where the variance is less than the mean. So there's less variability in the densities than under complete spatial randomness. And so um, this is incorrect again. It should be under dispersion. Uh, the source of the dispersion is competition or repulsion. Um, you know, competition between stores would mean that the stores are more arranged regularly like gas stations or um, other you know Walmarts tend to be spread in space so that they don't compete with each other they each have their market area uh, with in biology there are many, many examples of, of competition among species and this could be an inhibition process so uh, some of these processes again have mathematical expressions some very interesting ones have this concept of a minimum permissible distance. So no points can occur closer than a given distance. This kind of a minimum threshold. And again, there are a number of Matern processes that express this mathematically. Um, just to give you a sense of this, these are uh, two examples of a particular form of a matern process. The one on the left is a type 1, the one on the right is a type 2. And, uh, you know, it's hard to distinguish this um, visually. That's why we'll be using statistical tests, but they are more spread out than they would be randomly. And then finally, just a few words about some other models. There are several types of mathematical point process models that explicitly model the interaction between the points. And I just want to mention some terms here in case you run into this, but we it's really beyond our scope to go into the mathematical detail. But these are Markov point processes. These are processes. Strauss processes are very well known because they have interesting parameters that can be connected to some of the exploratory devices that we'll look at later pairwise interaction point processes. So there's interaction between the locations, interaction between the areas in which the points 
occur would be aerial interaction point processes. So all these result in formal models that have parameters that then can be fit to the particular uh, point pattern that we observe, observe using a number of techniques like maximum likelihood or methods of moments. And as I mentioned in the beginning, this module is really about exploratory techniques for point processes. I want you to know that this modeling exists and it's actually a very active area of research, but it is beyond our scope. So this closes the second part of module two dealing with spatial point processes.